Hello friends and welcome back to Enterprise Architecture. Now, last episode, you all may remember that I said, so for right now, Satisfactory Plus is going to be the infrequent update series that we're going to be doing. And my Minecraft series right now where we're playing FTP Skies is going to be the focus of a lot of my energy and attention. But as it turns out, now there's a bug in FTB Skies, which is the Minecraft mod pack I've been playing. And unfortunately, this leaves me in the same place that I was at when I had the Enigmatica 9 bug that recently occurred. I can't play the game if the game is broken. So no update again last week. Instead, I've been spending that time playing more Satisfactory Plus. Now, I know you all like the Satisfactory content a whole lot more in general than my Minecraft content anyway. I get a lot more visitors focused on the satisfactory content, so give the people what they want, I guess, even if this mod pack is just driving me completely batty. So today we are going to get started with Molten Metals. Let's dive in. So at the end of the last episode, we went ahead and started unlocking tiers three and four. And the first thing I want to do is get steel production up and online. This will give us access to coal, and it'll also be the first step along the way to getting our solar production. So as I mentioned before, getting the refined powers, solar power up and online is my top priority right now. This is gonna solve all of our power woes if we can unlock this. I am gonna to have to go and find our quartz crystal, and I think I know we're gonna, I'm going to find that already, but we do need to get some steel production up and online before we can unlock this. Okay, so to make steel, you know that we need coal in addition to iron. And so I found some coal all the way down here. Now there is a node over here, but I think that that's ensconced in rock. So I don't think we can get that until we get the noblest unlocked. So we're gonna run this all the way back across all of this space until we get back to the hub. Ideally, we'd have a more efficient way of transporting this than just carrying it on a very long belt, but well, we got belts, so belts is what we're gonna use. Ah, so I missed out on a milestone here. We have to go back and get molten metals and metal casting before we have the flexible blast furnace that we need to melt down our iron and then our solidifier and cooler so that we can create our steel ingots out of our molten steel components. So this actually becomes the next thing that we need to do, which means we need to go grab up a whole bunch of these intermediary ingots that uh, I had not been saving. So we'll go do that real quick. So the recipe for molten brass, which we make in our flexible blast furnace is actually copper zinc and crushed iron, which is kind of surprising to me to have these two other hot molten metals and then the crushed iron in there as well, but I don't know why they're doing that. But we get molten brass out of that, which we can then use to make brass ingots, which we then turn into plates and pipes. But we also get slag off of this and we're getting slag off of just about everything that you make in the blast furnace. Problem is, is I don't know how to deal with slag at this point. I think we can use it to be turned into just like solid slag, but I, I haven't figured all of this stuff out yet. So we're gonna have to figure out what to do with that. I'll just have to store it in the meantime. Okay, so what we have here is a very basic setup for these molten metals that we have unlocked. So our first machine here is taking crushed iron and creating molten iron and molten slag. Now the molten iron right now, we are turning into ingots inside of our solidifier and cooler, but that's also producing steam and requiring water. So we're having to pump water all the way up to the third floor of this building. It's not super efficient. I needed two pipeline pumps to get it here, but that's how we are getting iron ingots. Now we don't use any of the steam and I can't find the recipe yet that lets us cool the steam into water. So instead we're just pumping it out of a steam cooling tower, which then just gets rid of it and releases it into the atmosphere. This building doesn't have an output, it just radiates steam. Now, similarly, the slag that's coming off of our flexible blast furnace, I'm piping around to the fluid conditioner. 
And this is only taking in that molten slag and it's producing cold slag and sulfur. Now, molten slag, we don't have a way of dumping. So we do have to use this fluid conditioner to turn it into cold slag and sulfur so that we can potentially dump the cold slag. So the cold slag, I can't do anything with yet. I don't have the recipe that turns cold slag into crushed stone or whatever it is in the crusher. That wasn't working when I piped it in there. It ignored it. The sulfur, we can't use right now for anything useful but will become immediately useful in the near future because we combine this variety of different things for recipes here that we're gonna use very, very shortly. So that we're holding on to for now. So both of these are just going into storage containers over here, along with our storage container over there for our iron. And then last but not least, this fluid conditioner is also producing carbon dioxide. So as we're doing with our power setup, we just dump that into a CO2 chimney. Again, in theory, we could be turning that CO2 into something else, but I don't have the recipe to turn CO2 into anything else right now. So here it will stay. It's just gonna get output into the environment and be polluting, unfortunately. Now in theory, we could replace all of our ore production with this instead of just putting it through the smelter. There's a lot more extra resources and water is scarce on this particular coast. So we would need to come up with a better way of getting water to this location. But it does give us a significantly increased output of iron ingots. Now that's not really a problem for us right now. We have plenty of iron ingots. So the next thing I'm going to do here is instead, I just want to try this out. So I'd set it up in this way, but I'm going to tear all of this down and instead rebuild this for steel production instead. Now, before we can make steel, we do need to make an air collector and air collectors require brass. So we need to make that first. So I've set up our brass factory here. Now, thankfully brass is made with just the ingredients from Safa, right? When we crush it, we get both copper and zinc on the floor below here and we're bringing them up through the far wall over there. Those each go into their own blast furnace, one to melt the copper, one to melt the zinc. The molten materials are then going into this blast furnace along with crushed iron from the next building over here. That then blends together to finally make our brass. Now the brass then as a molten ingredient comes out into our solidifier and cooler along with water from our pipeline down here, which is being piped all the way from our lake on that end. So what ends up coming out the other end is our brass ingots all said and done once it goes through this chain. Now, the side effect of all three of these blast furnaces is slag. So all of that slag then goes into this fluid conditioner and the fluid conditioner then turns it into our sulfur and our coal as before using this smart splitter. Now the byproduct of that, of course, is that we are getting CO2 and the byproduct of our solidifier and cooler is again, still steam. So now we have the brass that we need. We can finally make steel. Now it'd be too easy if you could just turn these brass ingots into brass pipes. So you also have to do iron wire. Now I'm not gonna set up our creation for making brass pipes and brass wire and all of that stuff just yet. I'm just gonna make a bunch of these by hand instead because we don't really need a lot at this point. Now with our brass in hand, we can finally make our air collector. Now these are really big. They don't fit nicely into our building here in this four high wall system that we've got. So instead I'm putting it outside in between our two buildings. It's okay for it to hang out there. It's not gonna really ruin our aesthetics too much. And we might redo this later to make it look like it matches a little bit more, but for now, I think this is gonna work just fine. We'll craft up a pair of Blade Runners so that we can get our speed up and reduce some of our fall damage because I keep falling off of things. All right, so here is our finished steel plant. Now, again, this is a spaghetti mess for now. It's not scalable the way I have this set up, but I will eventually break this up into its component pieces so that we can scale them individually. But for right now, I just needed a short term stash of steel, much like we did with the bronze in the next building over there. So here we have our blast furnace where our iron is coming in. So that's getting melted down there. It's then getting mixed with our coal in this second blast furnace. You can see the red tube indicating the iron doubling back there. Now the yellow tubes are of course our slag coming off of both of those, which is going into the fluid conditioner, which is just turning it into sulfur and slag again. 
Here, our solidifier and cooler is turning that steel out of this pipe system into steel ingots. And those are getting routed out of the building through this top portal here. Now, again, we have our CO2 chimney and our steam cooling tower for the byproducts of those various processes. The fluid conditioner giving us our CO2 here. And of course, the solidifier and cooler taking this water in again from the lake way over there. And it comes back out as steam since we have no way to reclaim it. But that will give us our steel production. Okay, so there we have it. Now our top tier is producing brass over here and we're getting steel over here. And those are just going into our awesome sink storages on either side until we can get around to putting together the factories for them for our secondary item production. And again, that'll probably happen further out this way rather than continuing to crowd this space here. So that is the plan that direction there. So our steel factory has now produced the 250 steel beams that we need for solar power. So at long last, here we go. So this unlocks for us our solar panel mark one. And as you can see, we need a lot of things for this that we do not currently have. Those solar panels, carbon mesh, and steel screws, none of which we are producing yet today. So we're gonna need to get all of those. We almost have everything that we need for power storage, but again, we're missing that uh, crushed silica or whatever we need there. So this is going to be a problem, voltaic cells. So let's see what the voltaic cells require in this mod. Silica, silica we get from raw quartz crystal and we need hmm, that quartz crystal so where is our nearest i guess cryolite is what they're calling quartz crystal in this and i suspect it's going to be in that northern region in that cave with the spitters way 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 out there past the coal fields hmm might there be closer ones? Yeah, so that's going to be by the coal fields. This one, I don't know where this is. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to pack up some supplies and we're going to hike over to this and see if we have access to it. If it's buried underneath a rock or something, we're going to be out of luck. So some of our assembly lines have been getting a little backed up, particularly our crushed rock, which has been coming out of all of our various crushing factories. So as a result, we're gonna go ahead and unlock advanced logistics so that we can get those Mark III belts. And you can see here where they're starting to get backed up. I might go ahead and split these off and also put them into an awesome sink just for safety's sake. So we've got these two nodes of cryolite up here in the middle of the map that we are using. And I haven't bothered dealing with any of the local fauna, monsters, any of this stuff over here. There's also some gas pillars, but I just went ahead and plunked down a couple of miners on them. And this is all being hauled all the way back across the map here. So I set up a mini little highway system to be built out and we're going to use this as the foundation for getting stuff from the center of the map over to the grasslands. This is going to be the beginning of that structure. So right now it's just a Mark II belt making it all the way back across past gas pillars, across the chasm, all of this stuff. So that is where we are taking all of our resources. Now we also have a bunch of extra rubyite, sapphirite, and other nodes here, including some peat earth, finally, that we are going to want to use and take advantage of, but we haven't set any of that up in this space just yet. There is also an additional biological water node inside of that cavern with the spiders, which we can use for our power production over the hill here, but again, also not set up yet. Now to process our cryolite, I added a floor on the bottom of our stearolite processing factory here where we're doing our crushing. And inside here, I've only just set up a single crusher, although we can definitely expand this as we go. This is consuming 90 per minute. So most, but not all of our cryolite is being consumed. I can set up a second one if we need, but this seems to be plenty for most of our resource needs. Now, the quartz and silica that we're getting out of those crushers are being piped all the way along here, all the way from the far end of our factory line. 
to down where we're dealing with our crushed stone here. That's going into storage containers and I'm breaking off the silica to go into our production here for our photovoltaic cells, which we need for our solar panels. So this is just a mini plant again that I've set up. I've got a bunch of these mini plants, like I have the one over there for glass that we are just using so that we can get those secondary ingredients. And those are all going into more storage containers here. Now our photovoltaic cells are very expensive, needing 30 silica and 15 glass just to create two of them. And silica is the bottleneck at this point. So hopefully we'll start to catch up a little bit. And again, that might be a good reason to set up a second crusher, but we're gonna slowly accumulate these. Now there is one remaining major problem. And that is the fact that we need carbon mesh. Now in and of itself, carbon mesh is not difficult to produce because we just need a weaver and carbon dust and water. But the problem is, is we have not yet unlocked carbon dust. I'm not really quite sure where carbon dust comes from and what recipe we need. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of exploration to make sure that we have carbon dust unlocked. So I finally found the carbon dust, but unfortunately it's all the way down here under the sulfur node in the MAM, which is the last place I would have looked for it. I would have assumed that we would have gotten either from the solar panel or from the carbon. I don't know why the Satisfactory Plus developers decided to do it this way, but you have to do MAM research to get there. That means you have additional prerequisites, namely sulfur, which we get as a byproduct of cooling down our slag. So we've already got a bunch of that. Then we need to take the sulfur and also get brass pipes and heavy frames. Now, heavy frames we had to unlock with the advanced parts in tier four, but the brass pipes we have to make with the brass that we have been gathering in our mini factory. So to that end, I decided to go ahead and set up a larger brass factory, which I'll show you in a second. But once I had done all that, it was very easy to then get the explosives because we just needed our sulfur and we needed coal, and then we had our carbon dust. So here's our scaled up brass factory, which I've just started to build out. It's still got some bits and bobs and pieces that we need to expand as we increase the production. But for right now, this is a minimal setup that works pretty well. Now, the first smelter here, this first flexible blast furnace is taking in our zinc. And our zinc is just coming in the front over here on the side, along with our copper and our iron, all crushed from our factories over there, over the wall. So here we are getting molten zinc and also producing slag as a byproduct. Now that slag is going into the yellow tubes as you see down there, just as we've done before. The second stop here is crushed copper turned into molten copper. Again, same setup and slag is our byproduct and that's just being fed in from the bottom. And then those two ingredients are being mixed together over here in our flexible blast furnace with our crushed iron, and that gives us our molten brass and again, slag as a byproduct. So I've got two of these set up because I can actually consume all that I need here and I'm still producing more than I can keep up with. So from there, we bring our molten brass down to this next cooling plant, the solidifier and cooler, and that's building our brass ingots. Now that takes in water to cool everything down and it turns it into steam. So the steam is being captured in these white pipes. And the water, of course, is also still coming from our lake way over the hill there, the same source of water we were showing before for the mini factory version of this. The steam gets run all the way down here to another set of solidifiers and coolers, which is just turning it back into water. Now we are losing a decent amount of steam in this process. Basically, I think we're losing half between the water to steam in the first place and then the steam back to water. So it is a lossy sort of process, but again, we're getting water from the lake, so we should be okay. Then the last thing for us to deal with is our slag. So the molten slag is being turned into cold slag and sulfur. And once again, carbon dioxide is the byproduct. So that carbon dioxide is actually just getting output straight out into a carbon dioxide chimney, a CO2 chimney right here, which we get from refined power. So that just spits it back out here. Now the brass ingredients are also being dropped down through floor hole conveyors and put into these storage containers. So we have one here for slag, we have one here for sulfur. So our brass ingots are being dropped down here 
And they're both going into a storage container so that we have the raw ingredient as well as put into a constructor to make brass plates. Now, again, to make the brass pipes, we need iron wires. So this is running down to where the iron wire is stored, but I haven't hooked this all up yet and created a mini factory yet. So all of our brass pipe construction is still manual, but I've at least laid it out for when we want to create this and build it out. Okay, so let's take a look at our molten steel production. Now, this is basically a very similar setup to what we have done for our brass setup with a couple of small changes. So our first flexible blast furnace here is once again melting our iron into molten iron, and that's going into the top pipeline. And of course, our slag is coming out the bottom pipeline, so no change there. And you can see I'm pulling my iron off of the same belt as I use for my brass factory next door. So that's all of my iron coming in. I'm also pulling our coal off from that belt all the way down there where our coal is produced out in the grasslands over here. So that's bringing coal in for us. And then of course here we have our air collector, which is used in our foundry to make steel. And then last but not least, we have a pipeline, the same pipeline that's bringing water in for cooling over in the brass factory is of course giving us cooling again in this steel factory as well. So the first furnace here is melting our iron down into molten iron. That then gets mixed with the coal that's being brought in along with this air in this furnace, which gives us our steel. That's the black pipe here. Slag, of course, is getting merged in off of that. And that comes to this next section where we have our slag cooled in this fluid conditioner. That turns into cold slag and sulfur, which get dropped down into my storage facility below here. Now, that just remains to cool our molten steel down, again, using our water that's being piped in, in this cooler and this cooler. Now, the first solidifier and cooler is making steel bars. So we don't need much of those. So I've got them just set in a normal storage container down there. So when that fills up, we don't need any more. That's fine. But as mentioned previously, the only way that we can make steel screws is with steel rods. So this solidifier and cooler makes steel rods. And again, this is the only way you can make steel rods is in the cooler. You can't do it in an assembler or a constructor. So here, this is doing that work for us. So we're getting rods out the bottom here, and that goes into an assembler below as well as a storage container. So I have a storage container for steel rods and a pair of assemblers actually that are making our steel screws as you can see there. Now, the only thing that remains then is to take the steam that is the output of our solidifier and coolers and cool the steam in yet another solidifier and cooler. And that steam is then converted back into water and flowed back into our system. Now, the pipe work here is pretty complicated since you're using multiple ingredients simultaneously. I am using the same sort of a running pattern that we had used in our previous setups of our factories, pretty much where you just have all of the ingredients going down the back side so that you can expand here. So if I want to put another furnace over here, I could put another furnace here. And so the inputs are going down the back side, and then the front side is our output here, which are molten materials. So that same pattern still works. And then our bus goes along the front of the building itself here. So generally, you're not dealing with more than three ingredients that are liquid at a time. So that does give us some advantage. So for instance, I try to deal with our slag as quickly as possible here, so I don't need to keep running it down the piping system. Similarly, I'm taking our iron out from this side and putting it straight into our flexible blast furnace for steel, and I'm reusing that same slot, the second tier up here, for our steel that comes back out. So that gives us a nice little in, out, in, out. And then, of course, the only addition to that is our steam. Again, that's the third ingredient here coming off the top. And that just gets routed down here to where our water and steam merge 
back over here in the solidifying cooler that's turning the steam into water. So this little system here. So this works pretty well for simplifying our overall flow of ingredients. And for the few items that I am having to belt here, because I'm only actually using two belted items, which is a little bit simpler than the brass manufactory, our iron is immediately getting split off in this first chamber, so we don't even need to think about that. And then we're using our coal pretty quickly here in the second one, so I don't need to really run that further down. In a more complicated setup, I imagine once we start blending more ingredients, this is gonna get way more intense. And you may even want to take your initial smelting for like your iron here and put that in a whole separate building away from everything else. But for now, this works pretty good for me. I'm liking the way that this is set up and all of my byproducts generally appear to be getting dealt with pretty quickly here. Of course, I spoke a little too quickly. I did forget that I need to make a CO2 chimney just for our slag processing. This is the only one that produces CO2 as our byproduct of the cold slag and sulfur. So that we're just piping out here directly, not even thinking about it, and into a refined power CO2 chimney, which works seamlessly to get rid of that. Now, eventually, I think that you're supposed to be able to turn CO2 into carbon dust, but this will work fine for now. It's getting rid of it, and we don't need to think about it. Down here, we have our steel ingots. Here, we have our steel rods. And of course, last but not least, we have our steel screws. So that's gonna produce all the screws that we're gonna need to unlock the next little tiers of things. So there we have it. Our brass factory and our steel factory are effectively done now. I do think it's interesting to have these longer style of buildings when you're dealing with the fluids. It's a little bit more complicated to do it any other way, that is, Typically, I would build vertically, right? I want all of my things to be flowing up. That's what I'm doing over here. Each tier is producing a more complicated part on the tier that is above it. But that doesn't really work for fluids because you'd have to add a lot of pumps to move up. So instead of moving up, we're moving over, and that makes it a very long building. So we can still expand out this direction to the south, but I think in general, this is gonna work pretty well. And I do generally compose just a single item type in a building. So again, we're only doing steel here. We're only doing brass there. And the thing that you would want to do is potentially split those out into the subcomponents first. Again, copper, zinc, iron. Do those as molten mini factories that all they're doing is melting down that one item and then importing into the bigger factory that's doing the secondary production. But for now, this works great. And I do like that it's nicely compact, self-contained, and we only have a couple of little bits hanging off the side for dealing with our output of CO2 and our input of air. So yeah, this works great. I really like it. And through the magic of editing, we now have one and a half full storage containers with screws in them. So this should be enough to get us started for some of the initial unlocks that we need to do. So let's just snatch up a full inventory of those. Okay, so we've unlocked our carbon dust production and we have our crusher here making coal into carbon dust. That's going into these storage containers here. For long-term storage, I'm putting some carbon dust in here, splitting some off until we get a full container or so, because I know that we're gonna use it for something else, I'm sure. And then the weaver next to this is getting the rest of that carbon to make into carbon mesh. Now we're pulling water down from our pipeline above, which is going into the brass factory and the steel factory. So that just continues down here. And I actually put a second weaver in place, although we really don't need this yet because we're not actually producing enough carbon dust to justify this at this time. We're only getting 30 per minute. And since we're splitting off half into that storage container, we don't really need this one. But we are getting a about 20 carbon mesh per minute right now. So that's enough for our immediate aims. So the next thing we're gonna do is basically just leave this running for an extended period of time, uh, a couple of days probably here in the background so that we get lots and lots of carbon mesh to go along with the lots and lots of photovoltaic cells we're producing all the way over there, I think. So that'll fulfill all of our needs for solar. 
The other thing I've done here is take some of our steel ingots and also turn them into steel pipes in this constructor. So we'll have a little bit of a backup supply of steel pipes, which we'll also be using. Now, again, these secondary constructors and stuff that I've put down here, this is all temporary. We're going to replace this with a real factory as we continue to expand our production of steel over here. We're going to keep running that out south along the grassland so that we have plenty of room for it. But for right now, I just need a temporary supply of steel pipes, rods, screws, etc. So this is the place that they're living is down below. Well, I think that is a pretty good start to our molten metal production factory here. Next episode, however, we will be getting into exactly my favorite thing in all of these mods, back to solar with refined power. Hopefully by then, after many hours of queuing up our resources, we'll have enough that we can actually put up a whole large solar array, and more importantly, a solar power storage array as well for all of the extra energy, so we can actually run our factory at night. Wouldn't that be nice? But that's going to be a little while before we get to that point because we need to store enough resources to be able to build all of those solar panels. So thanks again for watching us here on Enterprise Architecture, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye, friends.